Welcome to the Thick and Mystic Moment, the show that's all about uncovering the secrets of personal transformation and celebrating the incredible stories of those who've dared to change their lives. I'm your guide, Robert John Hadfield, and together we'll explore the power of change. Let's get started. In 2011, there's this really interesting movie that came out. The, it was called In Time, and it was starring Justin Timberlake, who was kind of awesome. I, I actually love, I love Justin Timberlake. Anyway, the premise in this movie, it was placed in the year, I think it was 2169, and the premise of the movie is that it, at that point, time actually becomes currency. The idea is, by then, humans have conquered mortality because we've been able to conquer aging. There's no more aging. There's no more disease. There's basically no more dying. And so... What happens is in order to basically manage the population, because you can't have everybody immortal, you have a clock on your arm that's always ticking down. And so again, time actually becomes currency. So you're born, you get to live 25 years, and then you get one year after that. And and then you have to make time. So if you go to work, you have a job, at the end of the day, you actually get paid in time. And then this clock that's constantly ticking down in your arm, time will get added to it. And there's a beginning, near the beginning of the movie, there's a scene where they go buy a cup of coffee. And I think the cup of coffee was three minutes. And so kind of like we do with tacking our card, they'd put their wrist or something underneath these little uh, these little scanners that would then, if it was three minutes, it would take three minutes off your clock. Anyway, so the and this is how they manage the population. And if your clock ever gets down to zero, you're gone. You've timed out and your life ends that fast. And anyway, that's the premise of the movie. Now, just like uh, the world we live in today, there's this massive disparity between the, the different types of people. And so, just like our currency today, in this movie, there are people who live a life day to day. And they wake up in the morning and they only, every single day, they're able to just make just enough time to make it through another day. And they're just always in survival mode. And then you have the other extreme, where you have people that have just they've managed to accrue and earn and through various means like like today massive massive amounts of time so they're for all intents and purposes immortal and so then you again have these 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 massive differences in in how these people live and so at one point the the Justin Timberlake character whose name is Will Salas, Will Salas, anyway, Will, uh, he ends up in this building with another character. And through some circumstances, these bad guys were chasing him. And then these two guys end up locked away in this building, hiding away through these unusual circumstances. And they realize that they're going to have to be there in this building all night. Well, Will, the the Justin Timberlake character, is one of those people that is living day to day, just surviving, just somehow getting by with just enough time every single day. And he's stuck in this building overnight with this guy that has this overabundance, who has way, way, way more time than he needs. And it's really interesting because as they... Uh, as they interact with each other, the, the, the way that they perceive what all this means. And the guy that has the, the overabundance of time almost laments it because he has this, this idea of what do I do with so much time? What am I going to do with all of this time? 
And he, at one point, looks over at the Justin Timberlake character, and he says, if you had as much time as I have, what would you do with it? And Justin, the Justin Timberlake character, who basically is just living day to day, says two different things. And I thought these things were so interesting. The first thing his character says is, he says, I would stop watching it. And then he pauses for a second. And then he comes back. And then he says, if I had that much time, I certainly wouldn't waste it. So anyway, these two answers. The first one is so interesting to me, I'd stop watching it. Because you, when, you, when you think of it from a, from a person that doesn't have any time, there, there's two ways to look at this answer. And I loved, I loved this so much. Because for somebody that doesn't have much time, his, the thought here is, I wouldn't watch it or I wouldn't have to watch it. I wouldn't have to pay such close attention to my time because his, from his perspective, he's constantly watching the time. He's constantly watching his clock because he's always on the verge of run, running out. And so he sees this and the guy says, if you had this much time, what would you do? And he goes, well, the first thing he, his thought is I wouldn't, I wouldn't watch it. So from a, from a person that doesn't have any time's perspective, it's a, it's a sense of I could relieve myself from having to be stressed all the time. But then there's another way to look at it. From a person that has this abundance, the idea of I wouldn't watch it is almost, is almost like advice. If you are constantly watching the, fa- the clock and, realize, and noticing that you have an overabundance of time, if you're focused on the fact that you have so much time available, it removes all sense of urgency in your life. And, and, and why I found this so interesting is because we, I think, do this to ourselves. We, we wake up every morning and because we keep waking up day after day after day and we have the routine of day after day after day, we get into this false sense of security like we have just all the time forever. Like this is never going to end. Like we just have this overabundance of time. Like, it's, like, like we have just so much available to us and we become careless with our time. So I started thinking about this and I go, which one of those two things, as you look at these two guys in this room, which one of them is the real curse? The guy that doesn't have any time, he hates the fact that he's constantly having to focus on his time, but he is always living with a sense of urgency. I'm running out of time. I have to do things. I have to work. I have to get things done. I have to focus on my time. I have to make sure that I'm making good use of the time that I have. The person that has an overabundance of time is lulled into this false, this sense of security. And as a result, all urgency And good use of time is gone because there's always tomorrow. I don't need to do anything right now because I have so much time available. So then again, I started thinking about which one is actually the curse, the one where you have the not enough or the one where you have the abundance. I heard a... a, this, this quote came up on a feed a long, long time ago. There was, uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson was in, a, was in an interview with Larry King. And, and, and it, he had this really interesting interaction with him. He, 
Larry King, or Neil Grass Tyson asked Larry King, he said, he said, if you could live forever, would you? And Larry King's immediate answer was, yes. And Neil deGrasse Tyson kind of laughed and he says, you know, they're, they're, it, it sounds great. It sounds really nice. But then he came back and kind of addressed this idea that I was just talking about there that bring, comes up in this movie. And, he, and Neil deGrasse Tyson said, it's the knowledge that I'm mortal that creates the focus that I bring to being alive. It's the knowledge that I'm going to die. It's the knowledge that I'm mortal that brings the focus to being alive, the focus that I have on being alive. And it's the thing that creates the urgency to get things done. That's a paraphrase, but that's really what he was, what he was saying. I focus on being alive and I have a sense of urgency because I know I have limited time. And when I get back to that movie, he, 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 you know, again, which one of these is the curse? Well, then what happens in this movie that's so fascinating is they both fall asleep. And during the night, the guy that has the overabundance of time goes over to Justin, the Justin Timberlake character who's asleep and he does one of his little transfers and transfers a century to Justin Timberlake, the Justin Timberlake character. And then he leaves, disappears. And when the Justin Timberlake character wakes up, he looks down at his arm and he sees that he now has a century available to him. And then there's a note from the guy. And it says, don't waste my time. It was such an interesting concept of, of when you have too much or have the sense that you have too much, you lose, as Neil deGrasse Tyson says, you lose your sense of urgency. And so now the thing is, I'm just give, now I'm handing you a century. I'm handing you all this time now. And now your job is to not waste it. And again, how many of us get lulled into this false sense of security where there's always tomorrow, there's always enough time, there's an abundance of time. We sense it because it just keeps happening. And then the urgency falls off. And we start to waste it. So where I was going with this today is I found, I found this really interesting article from a newspaper back in 1956. And I, there's this, I love this. And there's this really interesting thing he says in here that, that when I read this article, it reminded me of that movie and that exchange and that idea of, of having, having time and recognizing the preciousness of time and the, uh, the tragedy of wasting it. So this is, this is from a newspaper, November 25th of 1956. And this is really interesting. The, 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 the article is called No Time to Spare. And it's written by M. Lincoln Schuster. Now, if you recognize that last name, Lincoln Schuster, uh, if you ever heard of Simon and Schuster, this is the guy that started that, that book company, that publishing company. And he wrote this, he wrote this, this article. And so here it is. It's very short, but I think you'll find this interesting. He says, the most creative man I know is 91 years old. He is Bernard Berenson, the world famous art historian and humanist 
who has willed to Harvard University his fabulous paintings and his incomparable library in Florence. The secret of his achievement and his happiness is that he has no time to spare. When I saw BB, that's his initials, last week, he was still unquenchably young in heart, a supreme master of the greatest art of all, the art of living. This is the art of getting 60 minutes from an hour, 24 hours from a day. Never willing merely to add years to his life, he always insists on adding life to his years. He does it by being everlastingly interested in in the world around him. Each minute of his time is dedicated, disciplined, undistracted. In his ninth decade, his agenda of unfinished business is more inspiring than ever. At the moment, he is working on five books, completing a vast and comprehensive catalog of the Renaissance and still enjoying the master fulfillment of getting things done. In his classically beautiful villa, Aitati, amidst the olive-crowned cypress-guarded hills of Tuscany, surrounded by the Giotos and the Tintorettos, which he himself discovered and authenticated, he still rules over the Mediterranean realms of scholarship in the visual arts. But not content to be the most famous art critic in the world, He has also a passion to touch life at all points. Rejecting narrow specialization, he has taken all the humanities as his province. That is why he has no time to spare. Now, this is the paragraph when I read this that reminded me of that movie that hit me really hard. So so listen to this. When my wife and I saw B.B., again his initials, on his last birthday, he told us he was so steeped in, quote, work in progress that he wanted to stand on the street corner, cap in hand, like a medicant, begging the idle passers-by for the hours and minutes they were wasting. I loved, I loved that visual that here this man is, he's 91 years old. He's writing books. He's doing all of his artwork. He's just fully immersed in living life and getting as much out of it as he possibly can. Not wasting a minute. And his, he, he looks at him and says, I want to stand at a street corner like a beggar as I look at people wasting their time and beg them to give me the time that they are wasting. And it continues. Here's an image to remember. It is one which may make you stop and think again. Whenever you are tempted to say you are bored or that you have, quote, time to kill, it may help you to remember that the happiest people are generally those who have no time to spare. This is a lesson that I think probably everybody needs, and I know myself for sure. Making good, proper use of your time not getting lulled into this idea that you have plenty of time available to you. And something I heard not long ago, uh, uh, repeated, I've heard this many times, I heard it again just a few days ago. It was, it it went something like, one of the things that uh, most successful people have in common is that they, say no to most things. So when you sit here and you listen to this idea of what this article is called and what they ended it with, no time to spare. And if you don't want to waste time, 
this precious time that's given to you, one of the things you have to learn how to do is say no. Which helps you prioritize what's important. I have X number of hours a day. I don't have any more or less than anybody else. We all have the same amount. And most successful people have that one thing in common. that They know how to say no. Most things that come across them, the answer is no. Which forces yourself to recognize and prioritize on what really is important. What things, what is the best use of my time? What is a waste of time and what is a good use of my time? What should I prioritize in my life? So that I'm living every life, every moment, every hour in the best way I can. Anyway, it's a really important thing to, for, for all of us to remember. And it, again, I watch that, looking back at that movie, the real curse is not having not enough time. It's having so much that you waste it, that you don't take it seriously, that you don't have a sense of urgency. And so it's important for us to learn how to say no and start looking at our time as a precious resource thinking I might only have today. So how am I using my minutes? How am I using my hours? What am I doing? That is, what, what am I putting into that time that's valuable enough for this precious resource, this limited resource that I have available to me? Thank you for joining us on another Thick and Mystic Moment. We hope today's episode has sparked your curiosity and ignited the flames of change within you. Remember, you're not alone on this journey. Stay connected with the Thick and Mystic Moment on all major social media platforms. Please come and share your thoughts with us and share the podcast with your friends and anyone else seeking transformation in their life. This is Robert John Hadfield signing off. And remember, do something different today. Ooh,